Hi, I'm Montana New York, and I'm your host here at Cambridge House, and I'm joined today by the one and only Gianni Kovacevic, well-respected author and investor. Gianni, thank you for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. It's uh, very timely here as we come into the end of April, and I think we're going to be talking about what uh, is very topical these days, battery metals and what's going on. Yes, absolutely. Let's get right into it. Um, battery metals in the market, what's there for you right now? Well, we haven't, I mean, obviously everyone is, is very familiar that th this is a nascent a growth industry and, and we haven't even started yet. I mean, they are, are, they are going to build companies around the world, billions of batteries. This is going to happen. There are a lot of smart people uh, working in this industry. The prize is magnificent. That's why they're doing it. And when you have what I would even you know, submit to people, many hundreds of thousands of people, you know, the, the chemistries are going to change a little bit, the technology is going to improve, but they do need the input materials. You have to have them. You can sit there and, and jockey around that big issue. And it's a good news story because there, we will be able to source the big ones, copper, aluminum, lithium. And that's what we're going to talk about. And I think that the um, understanding how industry is going to be embracing these new technologies. This is not, it'll, it won't resemble the same lithium and, and copper market that we had 20 years ago. And it's an exciting opportunity for uh, people that want to speculate in this trend. Great. Um, we touched on the factories that are going to be uh, creating these batteries. And there is a new Tesla factory going out in Berlin. And I would love to know um, your input of where, what impact you think that's going to have on the market. Well, that's one one singular factory and he yeah. when they built their first one they took the in fremont california they took that old toyota plant the objective always was to build five hundred thousand cars there and which they did and then to, to, to twin these these um big mega mega factories for the cars and they have one in shanghai they have one in austin texas and now they have one in um, um outside berlin germany here's the takeaway when they did the first car plant it, for the capex, it was about $15,000 per, uh, uh, per car that you could build in that plant. When they did Shanghai, it was less than 5,000. It takes a lot less floor space, takes a lot less staff. It's, it's highly automated, highly robotic. And they're, they're, they'll be able to make these things like, uh, you know, like you can just keep duplicating them and duplicating them. And just now, everyone would have seen this because Mr. Elon Musk, when he makes a proclamation, it, it is a headline. It's always on the front page of whatever media channel you're looking at. And he said to, hey, all you software guys, all you business guys, if you want to make a lot of money, get in the lithium business. It, it's going to be a great business for the rest of your life. And that is why I've, I have followed that sector. I do have a lithium company, but it's the nuance and what's going to happen within the lithium companies. Uh, that's going to, I think, um, I think it's going to surprise a lot of people. And you just have to have the fortitude. If you have the Saudi Arabia of size deposit for lithium, eventually all of these hundreds of thousands of people, smart people, these many hundreds of corporations, they're the ones that are going to solve and get the last mile, but you have to have the deposit. And that's what we have at Lithium Bank. Great. Um, and then what is a great way for investors to be capitalizing on this um, shift? Let us look at the anatomy of a junior mining company. So some of the people watching the show have seen me. I'm at the many Cambridge shows that they may be seen doing different media. And I'm most closely associated with being the, the, the former CEO of Copper Bank, mm -hmm. where we created a strategy to buy high quality, uh, well-situated copper projects when the market was very negative. And we started that in 2014. And obviously, it was difficult. You look at 2017, 18, 19. Those were very difficult times, but we stuck with it. And so this story has sort of two different parallel paths. One, with the projects we chose. We chose projects, and I say well-situated. I'm talking about the premier locations, Arizona and Nevada. We didn't want to fool around with any of the, uh, the rules that could change, the taxes that could change, nationalization. Um, communities that don't want these projects, all, all those other issues that you see that it's a myriad of problems that could happen with mining companies, but they also had to be data rich. What did we buy? It's a risky business and we wanted to buy projects that already had a ton of 
de-risking, known information. And our portfolio, which had, you know, it would take well in excess of uh, $100 million to duplicate all the work that happened on those, on those projects. So that's what we acquired. And it's interesting because now it, the company is being renamed to Faraday Copper. First day of trading will be April 25th. That stock, Montana, already is a 10-bagger. If you had actually followed the story, it was, it was kind of a, a boring, you know, up and down story, up and down. But you know what? It's a 10-bagger already, and the news hasn't even started to be delivered. It's now trading. It's, it's Faraday Copper. There was a financing that was announced uh, by the new management team. No warrant. Fully subscribed. And now there's, you see the, the stock is trading significantly higher than, uh, than the financing price. And the news is yet to be delivered. But what's the takeaway here? I was only involved with one company. That was my focus. I woke up every day. All I wanted to talk about was, was copper and the electrification of the world. I wrote a book, did all my tours, so that it would be a, a very high quality or very polite segue. It was, well, what are you doing? Well, I'm speculating by buying these projects. Looking when the market normalized, I was highly confident that a, that capital and technical people would want these projects. That's exactly what's happened here. And in my opinion, this is for me going to be a twenty or thirty bagger. You know, when all the when all the smoke settles, and for these junior mining companies, of course, everyone wants to speculate. They want the opportunity, but the reality is, most fail. They do not work. Looking for, for a new discovery is extremely difficult. Once you've found it. Then you have to go through a battery of different tests to prove, is this going to be an economic deposit? And as the, everyone should know, for one in 1,000 ideas actually becomes a mine. We didn't want to be involved in that. And everyone, you know, they, they, they're, they're very upset when the, when the story doesn't work, but you have to mitigate your, your anticipate your expectations because the fact is most of these things do not work. The problem with the junior mining industry is that because of this, these people that, that are involved in the companies, they're, they're usually involved in 10 companies, 10 headaches, and you can never plug the holes. You need to have a razor sharp focus, which is what I did. I was only involved in Copper Bay. And then we wanted to get involved in another uh, big macro theme, bank idea, and that was lithium. Because the growth of lithium, it's going to be you know, the Kager growth rate is going to be something 20, 30% a year for the next 20 years, which means it's going to grow by two and 3,000% in the course of the next 15 or 20 years. And we, I'm, my understanding gets more fortified when people like Elon Musk are telling the world, we want to build billions of batteries, not just himself, but the industry in general. And that's what's going to change. Where the, when the second part of the anatomy of a junior mining company we wanted to get involved in that theme, and I did it in a very polite way. We, we did it very carefully. I did it very slowly. It took four years. Lithium Bank listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange Venture on April 1st. And so people can see our, our last financing was done in August, September of 2021, $1.50 a share. What's it trading at now? People can look at the insider buying. I was the, the, one of the biggest insider buyers of my former company, Copper Bank. Um, and now I'm consistently buying around 15,000 shares a day of Lithium Bank, even though I'm the third largest shareholder, not management, and it's a razor sharp focus. I'm involved in one company and one company only. When I wake up in the morning is so I can you know, focus on this company as a director and, and assist management and communicate the story. And I'm going to work very diligently on that because I believe that the projects that we own and the deposits that we have are... Or, or, or get our or, or way forward for the for the battery companies and for people looking for lithium chemicals. What do we own at Lithium Bank? So put this in perspective. You've got a red hot sector that the, the, the price of the commodity is up three or four hundred percent from our last financing, dollar fifty in August, September of 2021. So we put out a, our initial resource estimate which is, that demonstrates it as one of the largest deposits of lithium. And now our initial uh, PEA, preliminary economic assessment, which is being compiled by Hatch Engineering, very high quality firm, and that'll be ready around July of this year. That gives us the, the initial economic parameters. 
of what does that project look like? And I will submit to people that it's going to be one of the largest development lithium projects in the world, simply by the nature of the size. We're talking about a large size. So if you follow standard lithium or E3 or the takeout of uh, Rio Tinto when they took, took, took over that company for $825 million or, or, the, or, or Vulcan, the, the market caps of these companies are in excess of $1 billion, all except E3, but the, all the rest of them I'm talking about. So what, um, what I believe is going to happen here is the, the way that we create uh, the lithium chemicals comes from three sources. The traditional ones are hard rock mining, the, or the more famous uh, application would be with the evaporation of brines in South America. And now through these underwater reservoirs, briny water can be brought up, concentrated, and put into uh, a product that these companies can then go and, and do the last mile. Why are they going to do this? This is very important. This is a, I cannot underline this enough. We are not going to solve the Rubik's Cube. Our job is to delineate the deposit, create the economic model. Once you have that concentrated uh, product, which is to boost the grade of the, of the initial uh, lithium, those companies take this product and their chemists and their engineers and their technicians will work it. And to, to be some sort of a chemical or some sort of a product that can fit into the future generation of lithium ion batteries. And when I'm talking about size, this is the Saudi Arabia of lithium is in Canada, in Alberta, with our projects. We have over 3 million acres uh, in, in concession between Alberta and Saskatchewan, 3.3 million acres. These are big company sized projects. Stay tuned. People want to follow this narrative and they want to follow this theme. And in, in the case of Copper Lithium Bank, you're buying it at the same price that it was done. We raised eight and a half million dollars nine months ago. And there's going to be a tremendous amount of news flow. So that's that's my focus. And I think people can either just follow the lithium sector through the lens of a company like Lithium Bank, because we will have a lot of high quality macro content to support this investment thesis or this speculation thesis. And then, of course, you can look at the performance of this investment opportunity. And how many shares outstanding in Lithium Bank? 37 million. Do you have a razor sharp focus management team? Absolutely. Do you have people involved that have done it before? Yes, we do. Paul Matissic, he's our lead director. He sold two lithium companies. He knows what he's doing. And the people that are associated with our group, including the investors, you know, that's what gives this a tremendous amount of torque. When you're talking about having only 37 million shares outstanding and our competitors, our peers, more than one have a multi-billion dollar market cap, this is a fantastic uh, I think development, and we will see that that's my job. That's why I believe I'm not doing this because I'm a nice guy, just like Copper Bank. We did very well with that story, but I'm doing it because I think it's going to be also a very, um, a very successful transaction for me as, a, as an investor. So I think that hopefully that gives you um, some context there, but look at the DNA of a junior mining company. Most do not work out. Most are, have, they, they have a lot of risk. So hopefully you can stick to teams that have done it before, have a razor sharp focus, and of course, something that has been adequately de-risked. So that, that, that's, that, that's what, I'm, what I'm suggesting to people these days. Great. Um, and then we did touch on how you're mostly invested in one company. Is that how you create um, most of your wealth in this space, just by focusing on one stock? Or how do you um, create wealth? Well, what, what, opportunity when it knocks... You know, as Warren Buffett you would say, you don't even need a pencil and paper to figure it out. It's got to be in this sector, in this industry. It's got to just be obvious. So a lot of money has been made in a in, when the market goes very bearish. And when you get four, five, six years into a bear market, that's where opportunity ranks. So we were, the I bought Copper Creek uh, in Arizona. It had a market cap of $200 million. It would take an excess of $100 million to duplicate the work there. I paid $6 million Canadian for it, just to give you the, the over-under. Mm -hmm. and, and now the market cap, again, is over $100 million. And I think if you look at uh, the PI Financial put out their first, the first research report on, on the company. It's now called Faraday Copper, for, for everyone, just to be clear. FDY is the new symbol. And their initial target using 360 a pound copper is $2.10 a share. So um, th that's quite interesting. Um, and then I guess what the, the second part of your question would be, if you just re re remind, remind me again, please. 
Uh, just how you're creating wealth in the um ah yes okay so the, yeah that's how we are doing it one at a time yeah and then the um the idea the idea's got to be so obvious so another one that that i did I, I did it at cambridge house actually and jay martin was very kind he did it he did a helium special for me to so i could introduce the the network to helium helium was a commodity that was was going crazy it went parabolic and and they they ran out of helium in what was the one of the biggest suppliers, which was a, re, a reserve in Amarillo, Texas, that was what was feeding the market. It wasn't actually coming from primary production. The biggest producer was the reserve. We ran out. The price of helium went bonkos. So a group of guys, when the, when the helium price was boring, they staked uh, tens of thousands of acres of helium leases in Arizona, directly adjacent to the highest grade, highest pressure helium well ever drilled. And we said, you know what? We'll speculate on this one. And, and that's the one story between Copper Bank and Lithium Bank, where I was very vocal, very public. That stock went from 20 cents to $5. And we had warrants at the 20 cents. That's a hell of an outcome. But it was done because to me, it was a very, uh, very high probability speculation. Highest pressure helium well ever drilled, ever in production. That's a pretty good place to do it. And they were successful. And that stock has done very well. So I guess the point I'm trying to illustrate is I do things very um, strategically, one by one. It's I'm like the Maytag repairman. And these, usually your, your joy comes very quickly. And, and the, the, the Copper Bank was one such story. And then I think Lithium Bank, if you look at the, um, the if you could imagine the theater of your mind, where these companies that will be looking at our product and they will be looking at this material and it's not us. And this is a very, you know, they're speaking to a lot of different companies, those chemists, those technicians, those industrial corporations, they will be coming back and they'll, we'll be able to create a product from that lithium. And, and I think the same thing has happened with another a, a group of guys. I know they're German and they have a, a hard rock deposit in Ontario, rock tech lithium. That stock went from two cents to $8. Okay. And they're basically building now a, a chemical plant in Germany to, to support their, their deposit. But I remember before they were very, very, very forward thinking German business guys. They said, we will take one ton of this ore body and we will send it to Germany and we will let them, they will decide what to do with it, how it should be processed and what chemicals that can come from this. It's very interesting. And the same thing, it can be done and it will be done because it's a front page story for the biggest companies in the world. They want our lithium. They need to figure out how to use our lithium to make their batteries and they will do this. And it will not be in one single shape or one single form. It'll happen in many different ways and it will continue to, to progress. It's technology and it's going to be doubling every two or three or four years. And there will be breakthroughs more than one, which is why we're thankful that we have, um, this uh, really one of the world's largest deposits. When did we start Lithium Bank? Four years ago, boring just to name, two cents. 20 cents, 80 cents, and our last round was $1.50. And the story has just begun. So that's the anatomy of how we built Lithium Bank in a very, very careful way. And of course, I do my speculations. Hopefully, I'd like to measure um, what the loss could be, but one at a time. And those are the three that I'm involved with. Very cool. Thank you. And uh, while we're on the topic of electrification and those types of things, I'd love to see what's going on for you in the world of carbon credits or if there's anything you'd like to share on that front. Carbon credits are interesting, but you know what they have? They've got the fingerprints of government all over them. <laughs> How many governments? All of them. Are the rules going to change? Is the pricing going to change? I, it's, it's a tricky one. Uh, I think it's interesting. There is a future there. Absolutely. And there are some companies that have now been spawned, but the I, when government is involved like that at, at such a level, that's um, let's just say that the, the way it looks can change one day to the next. So uh, to be continued, people should be monitoring it. And it's, uh, you know, it, it already gets a lot of front page headlines at this point. It does. Yeah. Um, already. And Johnny, if my listeners wanted to find you to hear more, where would they find you? I'm in semi-retirement in Croatia. I'll be working every day with uh, with Lithium Bank, but you can Twitter. My my handle is uh, Giani K O V, and I'm I'm not really that active anymore. I'm just here, but I'm I'm here to support my team at Lithium Bank, and passively I'll also also be doing a lot of hopefully 
you know, amplifying the hard work and the news that the new team at Faraday Copper is going to be delivering to the market. And they are very, they're a high quality group. I mean, you just look at their CVs. They work for the largest mining companies in the world and they've, they've already sold a few different uh, projects. So uh, that, that's what I'll be doing. And if people, maybe I might be at a conference, uh, you know, on this European side, but uh, Twitter is probably the best way. And I do encourage everyone to sign up to get um, updates from Lithium Bank and from Faraday Copper because it's going to be a very exciting 12 months. And that means, I think, progress, good news, and good news usually. Uh, brings a positive share price performance, in my opinion. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Montana.